Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me for this special edition of Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast. Um, Once again, I have uh, gotten a hold of a couple more experts on how to navigate this whole uh, COVID-19 situation that we are finding ourselves in. And I am thrilled to be joined today by Greg Shepard and Randall Laveau. Um, and they're going to be talking with us about you know, really crisis management and, and what we can do as uh, business owners to navigate all of this in a way that um, helps us get through this uh, crazy time that we are in. So, and I am going to actually ask them to introduce themselves. Greg, I'm going to ask you to go first, and then Randall, please. Sure. So my name is Greg Shepard, and I am a serial entrepreneur. I've done 12 startups and exited um, 15 companies over a billion uh, and ha- haven't lost any money on a deal yet. Um, also, the founder of Boss Capital Partners, a syndicate. I have a book coming out later this year published by Forbes. And I write for most of the magazines and speak and and that sort of thing. Great. Thank you. Uh, Randall, you're up. Yep. So I have uh, over 15 years experience um, leading sales and marketing organizations. Um, My specialty is on the growth side, sales, marketing, and service delivery support. Um, I have uh, five years experience. standing up a marketing practice uh, within a consulting firm uh, called Sales Benchmark Index, uh, where I worked exclusively with private equity companies and their investments and portfolios, um, focusing on turnaround and change management, um, helping a lot of those those portfolios ultimately achieve uh, their end goal, which was uh, exit or acquisition. Got it. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys um, joining me. Uh, to have this conversation and and really provide some valuable information for uh, the listeners. So um, we're talking about crisis management and we are definitely in what I think we would all consider to be a crisis. And and Greg and Randall, um, this boss system that that you guys have created um, is really suited for helping people navigate this kind of thing. So I'm going to turn it over to you and ask you to share uh, how you think people could, can be um, getting through the next however long we have in this environment. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is, I would definitely say that this is a crisis, maybe a, you know, a, a category two crisis. Um, and you know, so Boss Capital Partners is a investment syndicate that focuses on uh, Series Seed SaaS companies. Um, the check sizes are between 100,000 and 5 million, and we look for a very specific type of company. And we use this strategy called Boss, and the Boss stands for the Business Operating Support System. And Boss is something that I've developed in collaboration with a lot of people over the last 25 years. Uh, trying to figure out a way to make it so that more entrepreneurs are successful. There's a huge, uh, huge problem in my view of entrepreneurs failing. And now we're in this crisis, which is going to make that any, you know, even worse. So what I wanted to do was try to provide, you know, entrepreneurs with some 
something, some tools and some framework that they can use to try to figure out how to, you know, instead of digging uh, further into the hole or trying to dig out of the hole, just build a ladder uh, to allow them to get out of the hole, get back on the surface and get their business uh, back in the, back in the, in the jam. Nice. So the, the North Star in Boss, there's five steps. There's the North Star, which aligns your company to the end goal. There's the strategy, which is the roadmap or the plan. There's execution, which is actually doing the plan. Standardization, which is leaving a breadcrumb trail behind you so that you know exactly how you got there and can learn from it. Uh, sort of like if you look at education, you know, there are textbooks, textbooks document the past, the history, and uh, have some, few, uh, some forth, uh, so, you know, some look into the future, sorry. And then Kaizen, which is just continuous improvement. And so when we look at this crisis, you look at the idea of a five-step process. And so the idea of this is to go from being in a crisis to going back to where you have control of your business and you're taking advantage of the situation. A lot of times these situations prevent huge opportunities, but people are focused so much on the negative that they can't figure out how to take advantage of the opportunity because they can't even see it. Yeah. So when you look at this five stage process, you look at first the call to action. What, what says that you're in crisis? Well, we've identified a crisis right now. The next thing that you do is you meet a mentor and that's me helping you right now. Somebody that has the advice to walk you through the following three stages. So the three, the, the third stage in this is to cross the threshold. So act on the advice. So this is like the execution, right? So get the advice, act on the advice. And the fourth stage is to get the reward. This is where you emerge from the crisis as a better company. And then you return back to ordinary. So the world has changed. Things are never going to be the game, uh, be the same again, but now, you know, you're a better company and you're built when this happens again, if it happens again, you're still in a good place. My background in the last 25 years, you know, I survived the dot bomb, which uh, ages me, but some of us remember the dot bomb <laughs> really bad. If you were in the, uh, if you were in the advertising space or the dot com space, that was a, a, a huge tech bubble that burst and it was, uh, it was like this. It was just like everything just stopped. You woke up in the morning, everything was gone. It was horrible. Then, uh, you know, you have the 9-11 the crisis and you have the 2008 recession and all of these things were, were, you know, the kind of things that shut down a lot of businesses. And so I have experience dealing with this. And this program allows me to be the mentor on step two of, that, of the five steps that I just gave you. So call to action, meet the mentor, crossing the threshold, getting the advice and acting on it. The reward emerging from the crisis as a better company, the return, now you're back to business as usual, but you're a better and more improved company. And I'm gonna ask Randall to go from here. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So, um, you know, th there's a lot of psychology behind um, entering into a crisis. And especially with this particular crisis being a pandemic, um, it's essentially unprecedented, right? Most of us are yeah. sitting back here saying, this has never happened before. The social distancing, um, work from home, not able to go into an office. Um, and that's true, right? This is an unprecedented uh, pandemic. But when you look at it um, in, in, in relation to what Greg was saying about his experience moving through other crises, um, it, it's important to um, remain calm in these and follow a process, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the benefit of, of us having uh, experienced and lived a lot of these crises is, is we've come out uh, with a standardized process, right? And, and a way to dimension the crisis and then a way to set up your tasks and initiatives to make sure, like Greg said, you, you return um, you know, transformed. Um, and when you return to status quo, you have a total new understanding um, of how to approach your business and situations. So pre-crisis, right, in, in most minds of an entrepreneur um, and, and, and people in business, um, we have a, a circle of concern, right? Um, these are all the factors that exist in and around uh, our business, our industry, our environment, right? 
um, a lot of these um, concerns we have no control of, right? So right. in uh, prior to a crisis, um, within that circle of concern, we have a pretty large circle of influence, the things we can control, right, or at least attempt to control. Mm-hmm. Now, when the crisis happens, right, we recognize the crisis, that circle of influence, which was pretty large prior to the crisis, starts to contract uh, and, and pretty drastically. Hmm. So if you, if you could picture this with me, your circle of concern is still stays the same size, but in, an, in a crisis, your circle of influence contracts drastically. And there's a few things that you should be focused on during um, a, a crisis, right? So now the benefit, again, of having us gone through this is um, we've actually created a list um, of, of things we can control and things we can't control. And so Greg and I, you know, whether we're working um, on our businesses or portfolios or advising others, um, we tend to pass this list, right, which, which is kind of the answers to the test. Here as an entrepreneur, as a startup, these are the things that you should be focused on in order to turn your business around and emerge from this crisis as a transformed business. And so um, we actually have, um, you know, a, a resource toolkit that provides all of this information. Um, the checklist is, is quite extensive, um, but at the same time, um, I think we can go through a couple examples here um, and, you know, to try to paint a picture for the audience and how to dimension um, some of these uh, areas of concern or things we can control during a crisis. That would be great. Yeah. So, um, Really, uh, it, it's important to understand how to come to this list, right? So um, this is where we leverage the boss process. And we actually have an initiative development process, um, which is five steps. Um, and again, this is a resource that we're providing to your audience and, and is available on, on our landing page. We'll make sure this is available to everyone. Um, but the first step in the process is to isolate the initiative, right? So looking at your circle of, uh, of influence and, and the things you can control, isolate the main initiative that you want to focus on. Now, as you, you progress through that initiative, the first step is to complete a SWOT analysis. And a SWOT analysis, uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, right? People have heard of this before. Yeah. Um, but the reason it's important to use this now and early on um, is because you're redimensioning uh, the, the initiative, right? Mm. The thing that you want to focus on has to be seen through a new light as market conditions changed, um, which is going to lead to buyer behaviors changing, right? A whole bunch of factors yeah. come in and this is a new world that we're living in. Right. So after you complete the SWOT analysis, um, you're then able to determine missions and objectives, right? Mission is holistically what you aim to accomplish. The objectives are the, the, the tasks that feed into that mission, right? The things that need to be done in order for you to get that mission completed. And then we work through a process called prioritizing, um, which is using urgent versus important and impact versus effort, right? And, and the reason that we go through such an extensive process like this for each of the initiatives is because entrepreneurs right now can't afford um, to, to waste resources um, which is people, money, and time, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, those are, are likely the most important things within your business right now. So contracting your circle of control, making sure it's over the specific areas that you can actually influence, um, and then having a process and a step uh, or a, a multi-step process in order to make sure that you're properly alloco- allocating resources, which is people, money, and time, right? I see. I love this for so many reasons. I think my biggest reason is because it is so, um, what is the word I'm looking for? It, it, it is specific. That's not the word I'm looking for, but, 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 you know, yeah, it has, it has specific steps that somebody, yeah. that's what I, you know, it's a framework, right? So, yeah. Or like, you know, I used to, the, the simple thing is, is that you can go through and you can just follow this framework and it's a guide. It's like having a guide. You know, it's like if you were going to go through a jungle and the guy is like, look, go this way. Watch out for that. Watch out for this. And they're sort of, they've made a path for you. Right. And it's a lot easier for entrepreneurs. And that's, 
the whole idea of boss was to to give people the 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 path that i've already blazed you know i was the tip of the spear through this whole process and you take quite a beating as an entrepreneur and i was like there's no reason everybody should have to go through this right be able to just give somebody a guide that is <clears throat> that is nimble and agile enough that it can change with the times and open source enough that it's free and that people can be helped by doing it and add in their own advice, which is how boss has developed. Yeah, which is so great because experience is such an important part of this. And I think it gives people that feeling um, where right now we're feeling so much uncertainty and lack of control. It gives people something they can do that feels um, solid, you know, that, that they're not grasping at like, limbs as they're falling out of a tree <laughs> yeah. i'm getting hit by them you know yeah, right on the way down right yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly yeah. you know as business professionals there's a lot of art to what we do right and a lot yeah. of creative ingenuity that goes into the entrepreneurial process mm -hmm. um but it's in these times of crisis that we return to standardization right yeah um it, it, there's no time, um, you know, to waste, right? Time right. And, and people, processes all matter. Um, they're, they're paramount in, in this. So returning to a standard that you could follow, and, and, and we've tried and tested this because, you know, crises um, can be very large like this, right? Pandemic, global pandemic, everyone's uh, practicing social distancing. But you could also have a crisis within your company. You could have a crisis within your industry. Right. And so it's important to always return back to these standardizations of steps, making sure that you are crossing every T and dotting every I moving through the process. Right. When I was talking about some of the experience I had, the dot bomb affected tech companies that were in the ad space. Right. So this was, yeah. you know, and I was in that space, that was a crisis. Whereas yeah. the 2008 recession was more of a real estate lending crisis that then turned into a recession. Right. So there are, and this is, this is the same scenario, right? I mean, it's been 12 years since we've had a, a correction, you know, market correction. It was due mm -hmm. anyway. Um, you know, the oil situation with uh, Saudi and Russia and then the, the coronavirus kind of tipped it off and made it happen. And so now you have to see these things as opportunities, right? So you have to right. sit down and say, okay, when this happens, there are really big opportunities out there. How do I get my mind focused on those? And, and instead of being so distracted with, with everything that is negative. Right, right, exactly. And I was in a meeting this morning, a Zoom meeting this morning, and uh, we were just all sort of doing a temperature check kind of thing. And one of the things I said to everybody was when, when you're anxious and fearful it's because you're in the future but when you're doing something you're in the present so taking action and doing something can keep you from being stressed and anxious so you know a, a embracing something like this where you know it's a toolkit it, it's there, there's there's the step uh process and strategy and structure to it gives business owners an opportunity to get out of the future, get into the present. And actually it sounds to me like create, um, like adapt their business so that moving forward, it is more, um, it, it, the picture I have in my head is that it has uh, steel around it, you know, that, that, that it is more, um, Durable is the word. Yeah, it's like bumper car. You go bowling when yeah. you put up the rails, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. So you can only you can't make a gutter ball. You may still make a bad shot, but at least you're gonna stay in the in the lane. And I'm exactly. Not happened to do that with my kids a few months ago. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is that's the idea, right? Is to and, and you're right. You know, if you focus, you know whatever you focus on is what you're going to get. You know, they say, you know, when you're riding a bike, you look a direction, you go that direction. Right. Driving, you look a direction, you go that direction. So yeah. what we're saying here is let's look in the right direction and let's stop, take a breath and reanalyze and reset the table. So the next stage of this is a, a circle of influence checklist. 
Um, I, I wanted to also say that a lot of the stuff that we're talking about on the podcast here are things that we made available on a website. Um, and, you know, there are tools, there's a deck in there, there's stuff that can be helpful to you and your listeners. Um, you know, so I know it's difficult to do this while you're just listening because you don't have visual tools, but those we're making available to you. Randall, do you want to go through the checklist and then we can hit on the uh, development process? Yeah, so th there's a lot on the checklist. And like Greg said, I, I, this is uh, free, um, you know, to, to the listeners here. Um, and it's available on the landing page. So we'll make that available to everyone. I encourage you to, to download it along with some of the other resources and tools. Um, we, we have templates in there that could help you dimension these processes and work through them. Um, so, so really a, a great place to get resources for this crisis management. But if I'm here, uh, if I'm looking at the circle of influence versus the circle of concern, right? Circle of influence being factors we can control and circle of concern being factors we can't control. Um, it, it's, it's really about uh, elimination, right? And, and just like in sales, I, I come from a sales background. Um, it's just in, as important to qualify out as it is to qualify in. So while your attention is drawn towards the things that you should be focused on and can control, it's also important to make sure you work through that list of things you can't control and stack hands as a, as a team or as a company, you know, that, that we're going to put these things aside for right now and, and, and shift all resources to focus on what's most urgent and what's most important within our company. Right. So a couple examples of these would be, um, uh, if we're looking at the product side, right, the priority of the backlog, that's something that we can control. And that's something that should be forefront and center uh, for everyone going through a crisis versus how long a feature will take to build, right? So when you, you dimension those, right, the circle of influence, the things we can control is the priority of the backlog. The, th the things that we can't control right now is how long features will take to build. We, we have to use this elimination process in order to move through this list. Now on the, the sales side, right? Um, something that would be in your circle of concern would be the customer acquisition costs, right? Um, and typically in a crisis like this, especially in the one that we're dealing with right now, where we have um, employees uh, who used to be in the field now working from home, um, we, we can't go into offices anymore, right? It, it, it's making it very difficult for companies to look at their customer acquisition costs, right? But this is something that's important to dimension very early and driving down your customer acquisition costs as early as possible because as the crisis continues, you, it, you see a withering, right, uh, of your efforts in, in trying to prevent uh, that increase, right? Now, in your circle of um, concern, something that you can't control in parallel to CAC or customer acquisition costs would be the lifetime value, right? Right now, yeah. we don't have the luxury and, and most sales organizations don't have the luxury um, to be looking at the lifetime value of a contract because right now revenue is paramount, right? Um, getting right. as much into your customer base as possible. So when you come out of this, right, you still have customers versus in a, a typical scenario, we would tend to push out lifetime value um, and, 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 and maybe not have a deal go through because it doesn't meet our standards for lifetime value. So those are our two examples. And um, there are many more here. Um, as I'm looking at the list, we have about 25 um, different things that you should be focused on in your area of concern and things you can control right now. Um, and about the same amount in the, uh, the factors you can't control. Got it. So when you get your company back to the stage that where it's sort of now, okay, you've got control of things, right? You can take a breath, your pulse is lower, you have some action items and something you can actually work off of. Mm -hmm. You sit back and you say, now that I've isolated the initiative, right? I know what I'm going to do. Then you go and you do a SWAT. So a SWAT just stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And it's like four squares. These <coughs> quadrants, each one of them sort of allow you to go with your action plan and do a SWAT that says, okay, what are my strengths? And then you do three to five. What are my weaknesses? Three to five. What are the opportunities I have? And then what are the threats? So this is like tailwinds and headwinds, right? 
And now that you have that, you can go in, you can say, okay, what are my missions? What are the top level missions? And, you know, we've talked about this before. There's four functional areas in uh, these types of businesses. So sales and marketing, service delivery, <clears throat> product and tech, and then shared services. And so now you say, okay, in this model that you have, in these action items you need to do, put a mission together for all four of those. Each one of them gets one mission. It's from X to Y by a certain date. Then you boil that down and you now have the ability to uh, create prioritization. So that mission creates the delegation and the, the prioritization uh, is the next step. And that is just urgent over important and impact versus effort. So things that are urgent happen when things that are important aren't there. So you start out as, uh, okay, what of these things are urgent and what of these things are important? Which one of these things are going to prevent more urgent things from happening? and you go on the important things first. Then you say, okay, let's look at what has the highest impact with the lowest effort. Now what you have is you have the incident initiated initiation plan. So you have your, your sort of high level plan of what you're going to do, that list that Randall just went over. You've done a SWOT to figure out what headwinds and tailwinds you have. And then you've developed your missions per functional area with those objectives and you prioritize them. And now you can move into ex to execution. There's a good case study that we can go over um, that sort of outlines this. Uh, Randall, do you want to hit that? Sure. So um, this is a company um, that, that we worked with uh, very recently, and actually they um, implemented this process and, and had already started to see results. So um, uh, the company is in the high tech space, uh, about uh, 10 employees. Um, and, and they're, they're selling an automation service just to kind of uh, set the stage or give you context. Um, the situation, obviously, that we're dealing with right now is social distancing um, has caused uh, the workforce to abandon the field and, and the customer acquisition costs have uh, skyrocketed as a result of that. So what they did is they leveraged um, the initiative development process that Greg just went, went through along with the um, uh, circle of concern checklist and started to work through some of the issues, right? Um, what they uh, did as a result, right, um, the, the process led them to um, two main points of focus, right, two objectives. Um, one was deal triage. Um, so rather than focusing on pulling in net new leads and building pipeline, um, they needed to, to focus on the existing pipeline they had and try to close those deals as quickly as possible, even trying to pull some deals that were forecasted for the future to now, right? Because of the uncertainty of the market, we don't know what's going to happen. And, and we were fearful of future pipeline falling out as a result of these economic conditions. And then the second was because the, um, the field um, is, is no longer relevant, right? Uh, field sales, field marketing, um, their, their field event budget was repurposed um, over to digital marketing um, and then, you know, s some set aside for other initiatives, right, which it's always good to have cash on hand um, in a situation like this. So as a result of them going through this process, determining that their two objectives were going to be deal triage, right, close as many deals in the pipeline as possible, even bringing some forward and then repurposing budget that's no longer relevant to things that are going to help you um, decrease your customer acquisition costs. Um, they were able to drop their customer acquisition costs by 20% uh, within a week, right? Just repurposing um, uh, people and money in, into the right areas. Um, and then the deal triage approach uh, that, that they undertook as a result of this process allowed them to, to pull in um, four deals that were forecasted for future months, right? So getting those deals in now before we, we, you know, while we understand what's happening and while people can still purchase our solution was very important. And so having those four extra deals come in early, right, provides a little bit more runway um, for them to, to be able to work through additional areas in the crisis management process. I really appreciate that example. And I love this, um, <clears throat> circle of concern, circle of influence. Uh, that it just is a great way of describing it. Uh, it. This makes so much sense to me. Yeah, and to your point earlier, you know, I mean, for me anyway, whenever I find myself really 
you know, stressed. Yeah. A lot of anxiety. It's usually because I don't have a plan. Yeah. It's I have, un I don't know what to do. I don't have the information. And so, you know, with boss, the whole idea of boss is to, is to make sure that you have a plan plan and at least you're directionally correct in a situation right. like a crisis, you know, yeah. um, this framework, you know, was, uh, brought through 25 years of studying, you know, all the different operating systems that are out there from Six Sigma to Lean to Agile and so on and so forth. I mean, there's so many of them. And then also the military, right? So um, we had some recent revisions to this process by a retired captain of the Navy and also executive director of the local university who gave us some really good insights into this from a perspective of triage and crisis management and this guy was responsible for an entire fleet of, uh, of ships, right? We were talking about, you know, things carrying nuclear weapons. So, you know, it, you know, he, he was able to sort of, you know, sit with us and we went over boss and, you know, I did this with the Navy SEALs and the first fighting wing of the Air Force. And, you know, these people deal with crisis that we can't even fathom. So, right. you know, it's, it's, you know, this process is, it, it will work for you. Uh, you know, it will work. You just have to follow the steps and mm -hmm. it'll guide you through. I mean, you know, obviously the steps are blank. You have to fill them in. You have to think for yourself, but it'll certainly get you away from that level of anxiety that you have and at least moving in a direction of, of being more solution oriented. Exactly. Uh, you know, we have, again, these tools available to people and there is a, uh, a chart that, you know, I'm going to try to verbally explain it, but on the top of the sheet, it has four quadrants and that's for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And below that is a sort of a spreadsheet and you see one column with the functional area, description of the functional area, the due date, and the percentage to goal. And this is how you track where you are. So are you 10% to goal, 25% to goal, whatever you are there. And then you have the, the three to five objectives for that overall the due date on each one of those and the percentage to goal. And then you have the KRs, the key results on that. And each one of those, and the, the framework is always the same. It's always from X to Y by a certain date, you know, time constrained. And uh, the integers are, you know, from X means dollar amount, percentage or uh, number to Y means the same, right? Dollar amount, percentage or number. Mm -hmm. And then you have a framework now and you put this together and then you start executing. And this, this is where you're sort of moved out of crisis management and you're back into the boss framework where you're now able to start getting things done and moving your way out of this situation. Yeah, which is really, I mean, that's, that, that is really the key that, that there are actionable steps you can take that move you forward and move your business forward instead of being in that sort of paralyzed, um, oh my gosh, I've never seen this before, don't know what to do. Uh, if you can, you know, sort of give yourself over to, well, let me just walk through a process um, that's been proven, then I, I you know, the, people don't have to reinvent the wheel. They don't have to do this as if they're the only company out there going through this because there's um, processes that have worked for other situations. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you that when 2008 happened, uh, I remember very clearly, actually, I remember getting up in the morning and driving to the office, getting to the office before everybody, sitting down, turning on my machine and having like 150 clients cancel, you know, just, you know, 70% of my income or something. I can't even remember what it was, but it was just like this, just cancel, 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 just all my emails were just clients canceling. And I remember this, this, you know, that feeling you get in your heart, in your stomach, that like mm -hmm. nauseous feeling and you're just like frozen. Yeah. And, and I was just sitting there going, huh, huh, just short of breath, you know, like, what am I, what am I going to do? Oh my, you know, and then I, I had to sort of take four deep, you know, I'd learned from the Navy SEALs, you take four breaths in at a count of four and four breaths out at a count of four, get a hold of myself and then sit down and say, okay, let's put together a plan, you know, hmm. put together a plan yeah. and make this happen. And so this, this is a really, really good set of tools that will really, really help these entrepreneurs get past, you know, the, this massive level of anxiety, which is just not healthy for anybody, 
you know, right. around, uh, you know, the family, the economy, everything, right? It's just not healthy, it's not productive. And get to a stage of like, okay, let's get productive, let's get focused, and let's get executing on something to dig our way out of the situation, you know, to get our way out of this hole that we're now in, that we've fell into. Um, the website that we put together is uh, Gregory, G-R-E-G-O-R-Y, Shepherd, S-H-E-P-A-R-D dot com forward slash COVID-19. Um, this is the page that we put together specifically for this. Right. And people will be able to go to this page. Uh, and we are going to be doing a, a bunch of live webcasts uh, with the universities and economic development councils um, to sort of help people through this process. And that might be good for your listeners to know too. Yeah, no kidding. And is there um, like an email sign up available there so that they can be getting updates on things like that? Yeah, they could, they sign up for email and they'll get updates on when the next webcast is. If they miss it, they'll get emails right. on the tools, you know, so they can start using them. Yeah. You know, we're trying to do our best to help entrepreneurs get, get through this tough time. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And I, and I am so grateful um, to the two of you for coming on and explaining this. I think this is going to be one of those things that helps uh, bring down the stress level, uh, give people things that they can actually do in their business, uh, which is so incredibly valuable right now. So uh, thank you both for joining me and having this conversation. I think it is so valuable. Um, it'll be out on the, on the show page soon. I'm gonna work on that uh, to get it out there. Uh, and, um, and thanks for the landing page. I will make sure that that's in the show notes, gregoryshepherd.com slash COVID-19. I'll make sure that's in the show notes. And we will all um, carry on and, and we will get through this. And uh, folks, um, you know, take those deep breaths that Greg was talking about. Do yourself a favor and, and lower your temperature and open up your brain and um, get to the business of working on your business and uh, continue to prosper and be curious as much as you can this time. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day.